off the glove of Bressler. One run comes in. Here comes Bodenhausen, and that'll do it. A mission accomplished. The first three-peat in big league history belongs to St. Joe. We came into the summer knowing that we had the potential to do it again in our first three-peat. Feels amazing, especially with all the fans here in a crowd of what felt like the whole stadium was packed. It's amazing. I mean, we don't toot our horn enough about how cool uh, St. Joe is, and so this is just a small glimpse into a St. Joe, the potential of it, what it could be. And St. Joseph's been known to be a baseball town for a long time, and with the way this team continues to play, perhaps this Mustangs dynasty is just beginning. I think we're going to go for four, and so eight-time champion sounds nice. Uh, until you hear nine. Welcome into a new episode of the St. Joseph Mustang Show, exclusively right here on KQ2, sponsored by Gets Credit Union and Ventura Foods. Chris Rash, Mitchell River, all with you again this week, like we always are. I don't know why I say it like that, but yeah. hey, we're back again this week. Hard to believe we're now three weeks into the Mustang season. Already three weeks. It's going by pretty fast, and the Mustangs are off to a pretty good start this year. They've had some really good baseball. We, we've seen some come from behind victories, extra inning games, a few losses here and there, but that happens early in the season. But you kind of get that feeling these guys are learning how to play with each other pretty quickly, too. Oh, yeah, especially that most of the players have been on championship rosters, and last year they had a lot of come from behind wins. They're doing it early already, so I, I like what they're doing so far this season. So we talk a lot about the Mustangs, but what about the Tenderloins? You saw the tenderloins I last did. year. I did. We, we went over what your favorite tenderloin was. Yeah, we don't. We that don't that do was that a mess. Again, yeah. But last Friday, the Mustangs getting into the festive again festivities as they are the tenderloins once again this year. So the tenderloins back again for the second straight summer. Some exciting things. And one of the players that you can catch in that uniform is Tanner Schmidt. Yeah, Tanner Schmidt's a name, but. Most of you in the baseball community in St. Joseph should know. He's a Benton Southsider, went to Benton High School. Now he's at Fort Hayes State in the MIAA. I sat down with him this week to discuss his path through baseball. Getting a chance to catch up with Tanner Schmidt, a name that most in St. Joe should be familiar with, the former Benton Cardinal. Tanner, this is your number two for you now with the Mustangs playing. Just what's it like to be back out here this summer? Uh, you know, it's great, you know, getting back out here with the guys and stuff. And there's a lot of people uh, from town and around town that are, you know, coming back for their second, third year. And then one of my most, like, well, the coolest part for me, in my opinion, is like meeting people from other places and, you know, just building new bonds with people. I like making friends and stuff, and that's kind of what it's all about for me. Johnny's done a good job of getting that combination, right? Mm -hmm. A really good local talent, but bringing guys in. Just what makes it to where you guys can mesh so well in a matter of six, seven weeks' time? I mean, honestly, this year it was... I'm not going to lie, a couple of days, like, <laughs> it was wild. Like, last couple of years I've been around, it's, you know, taken a week or two, three weeks to, like, really mesh together. But this year I feel like there's just so much, like, prior connection with some people, and then you just add some, you know, other guys in there that are kind of newer, but they kind of just fill right in. And it's just kind of, I don't know, it's, that's one of the most coolest things about it is just it just meshed together real easily and, it's like family, honestly. I mean, it's pretty nice. How has your confidence grown being out here, just making you maybe a better pitcher, just more confidence-wise for the last couple of years? Um, definitely, you know, the fan exposure with, you know, obviously thousands of people. Um, it kind of just makes you realize that, you know, it's kind of all on you when you're out there and you just got to find, like, a space in your mind where you can just, you know, refer back to whenever things might get tough or something. And um, you kind of just got to go back to it and trust it. And then when you can figure out how to trust it, then, you know, you kind of figure some stuff out. Start out your college career at North Central, and now you're at Fort Hayes State, but we were talking about it off air a little bit. Coming back from Tommy John, nowadays it's a lot easier to come back from Tommy John than, what, 15, 20 years ago. Just what has that process been like of – overcoming that because for some guys that's still quite the thing to overcome um i was actually just talking about my arm earlier and i was with wells uh, one of our pitchers i'm like 
the arm's like a Rubik's cube, you know? Like, <laughs> some days it's perfect, some days you solve it real fast after you throw, you know, long outing, and then other days you'll bounce back faster than others. And, you know, if Tommy John, it was, you know, it's just makes me think about baseball. Just It's like it's not a given, you know, and it kind of just makes me feel fortunate to still be able to, you know, be playing and stuff. And because I've been there, you know, I've had my down days where it's like it hurts, you know, just is it really worth it? And then, you know, I got through those hard times and, you know, back better than ever. So. Well, Tanner, appreciate you taking the time today, and we're happy you're back out here playing and looking forward to seeing you the rest of the summer. Yep, appreciate it. Thank you. So a pretty long homestand this week, and St. Joe Mustangs back next week with four more home games, including Wednesday against Des Moines, Thursday against Carroll Merchants, Friday night features a showdown with the Jefferson City Renegades, Chris, and Saturday night, the Nevada Griffins come to town to take on the Mustangs here at Phil Welch Stadium. Mitchell, plenty of chances to catch the St. Joe Mustangs at home next week. And Mitchell, we talk about what all the Mustangs do. And one of the things they do that's pretty important at Women in Sports Night. Regan Nash played for the Mustangs a few years ago, the first woman to ever play in the Mink League. They also had their first two women coaches ever last season, but there's more this year too. And I love that they are doing this and continuing to do so each and every summer because it's important to support and showcase the sport of softball and women in sports. I talked with two local area coaches on being recognized this summer by the St. Joseph Mustangs. The St. Joseph Mustangs, the powerhouse baseball team of the Mink League, knows that baseball isn't the only dominant sport in town. And with their Women in Sports Night, they made sure to honor two individuals making a difference in the local softball scene. I think it's awesome uh, that they're recognizing um, the importance of women in sports and, and how much progress Women in Sports has made. The Mustangs have done Women in Sports Night the last few years. And this year, the team having softball coaches Kendra Hodgen from Central and LeBlanc's Mallory McAndrews throw out the first pitch. Softball has been a part of my life, my entire life, um, even up until this day, obviously. So um, playing it as a kid and in high school and now being able to coach and being on the other side of the line. Um, has been really special and I grew up around it um, and you know on traveling teams and high school teams um, and it's just the memories from that um, are kind of what have made me who I am today um, as far as being a good teammate um, that carries over into my current job as a teacher and assistant principal. The game of softball continues to grow. Just look at the College Softball World Series. There's new passion and excitement for the game and with that comes more opportunities. Everybody's watching, like even people that are, you know, baseball mindset. They, they say that softball is such a fun, fast-paced game. It's a lot more fun to watch. It's pretty special to see that many people tune in at that time of year. I have so many people reach out to me watching the College World Series, asking me if I've seen games, and I think that it's kind of taking over. I mean, it's really like the talk of um, the town and any town in the nation right now. You can't take your eyes off of it. Being able to throw out the first pitch and be honored at the Mustangs is a special moment for the two. They played softball in St. Joe and they've coached in town. So they just want more athletes to start playing as well. Just the stuff that you learn being a part of a team at a young age and throughout your whole life, um, you hang on to that. So Kendra Hodgen and Mallory McAndrews being honored by the St. Joe Mustangs this year. Kendra. Well, the former softball coach at Central should be taking a different role in the school district, but like you said, a lot of good things for them this year as well. Plenty more still to come on the show, including the game of softball. A local legend who did so much, not for the game of softball, but also women who want to be coaches in the industry. We'll have more on her coming up as well. And don't go anywhere because we caught up with one current Mustangs player whose relationship with manager Johnny Coy goes further back than just the last few summers. Welcome back into the St. Joe Mustang Show, sponsored by Getz Credit Union and Ventura Foods. I'm Mitchell Riberall, joined once again, and thankfully, by Chris Roush. Week three, we're both here still, so that's good. You're still here. I'm still here. You took a mini vacation. You haven't allowed me to take one yet, but that's fine. 
How was it? <laughs> it was good. My uh, flight was delayed, but that, that's all right. I, we know. I made you it back. You told all of us. Yeah, well, yeah. I made it back here for just in time for the St. Joe Mustang Show because I knew I had to be here. And let's just get right into it. You spoke with a player who's kind of has a long tie with yeah. Johnny Coy. Yeah, so last year you did a story with Will Dryberg, uh, the former Bishop of Blonde standout. He, you know, when he was in the Boy Scouts, he took a picture of Johnny Coy. Not the Boy Scouts, but when Johnny Coy is down in Wichita, Wichita State, he took another photo with a future Mustang, too. It was awesome. I've never played in front of, the most I've probably played in front of is 100 people, so it was, it was a big difference, but it was really cool. In his first summer with the Mustangs, pitcher Riker, Riker, Curry. Riker Curry settling in nicely. Oh, nice pitch there by Curry. And it also helps when the Pittsburgh State sophomore holds a unique connection with the manager. I originally met Johnny when I was about 10 or 11 years old at a Wichita State baseball camp. And I don't know why, but we just had a connection. For those who don't know, Mustangs manager Johnny Coy played Division One baseball at Wichita State even drafted twice in the Major League Baseball draft. So my decision making will all start because I, I can't make a decision for something that hasn't happened yet. I'm just going to wait and see what happens and if it's there then it's there. But it's his time in Wichita that makes this relationship possible. Curry went to a camp and instantly connected with Coy. I do remember going and watching him some too in the next few years and he was all, I always wore number 25 because that's what his number was at Wichita State. And, just he was my idol. We saw a connection like this last year with current Mustang Will Dryberg and Coy as well. Curry's connection just adds another unique Mustang's tail. It just goes to show that you never know where a chance meeting might take you. It was just really cool to know a college baseball player and he was really good and it's just cool to have that kind of guy that you could say I met him and took batting lessons from him. And just really cool. Don't go anywhere because when we return on the St. Joe Mustang Show, one pioneer of the game of softball here in Northwest Missouri, Nan Carter, being honored by the Mustangs on Saturday night on Northwest Night. We'll take a look back at her career and the impact she's made in so many lives. Welcome back into this week's episode of the St. Joe Mustang Show. Mitch Ribrall and I am joined by the Mustangs owner, Kai Turner. Kai, thanks for joining us. Joining us, I never left. I mean, we've, we've been here this whole time, so. That is true. And so, Just one big. One big party. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Thank you. So let's get into it this season. You guys obviously won the Mink League Championship last year and going for a, another one this year. What, what do you think so far of this team this year? You know, this has really been a fun year. Uh, a lot of guys from last year with some of the new faces that we've seen. It's just like fun. I, I don't know, and I've said this to other people around me. It's just like this year has been a lot of fun uh, with the people around us. And so uh, I really enjoy the guys. I think, you know, they're all very uh, talented players. I mean, it's a very talented roster. Uh, you know, there's. I'm surprised we've lost a game. I mean, the Mink League's got some good competition, but just how much that we believe in, in these guys out here and how talented, you know, pitchers to positional players to the outfield to at the plate. And so uh, it's it's been a fun, fun start. Yeah, and you guys have brought back a lot of players from 2021 and, and last year. So why do you think those players gel so well together? Well, it's kind of like bringing back a, a news team, you know, kind of like uh, Chris Roush and Mitchell uh Ribroll. Rib yeah, Rib there you go. Ribroll. <laughs> yep. Right. Right. So it's kind of like bringing them back. and uh, But, you know, you've got that, uh, the chemistry, the bond, like you see on air between uh, Chris and yourself. And so, you know, you, you just pick it right up from there. And so these guys play all over the country, and, and uh, but then they come back right back to St. Joe, and it's just like, you know, they're, they're teammates again. So uh, there's something special about playing for the Mustangs, but then the bond that these guys – have with each, with each other and so it's just fun to see them back out there having fun again and just looking at at least this month uh you guys have a lot of home games on the weekends uh so just how important is that to you just to get the fans from st joseph out here at phil welch well not just this month next month too exactly a lot yeah. of home games but here what's important for us you know june's a a very important time because it 
from a guest perspective, could be their first time here, you know, so it's it's good to come out here and experience it and see what you're in for and then be a part of the action. But then from a player uh, side of it as well, you know, it's good for us. I mean, the, these wins are super important for us, especially it always seems like the playoff race comes down to that last game. I remember last year, it was I think it was uh, July 22nd, we were playing Des Moines. It was down between us and Clorinda. And we really didn't know who was going to host home field advantage. And you know, that was pretty big for us uh, last year. And I think it's what gave us the, the edge to go ahead and win that, you know, that last uh, the championship last year. So, uh, you know, June, June's a great time uh, to come out here and have some fun and, and see what's going on. But then July, like you're on the edge of your seat. And coming up next on the St. Joseph Mustang Show, exclusively here on KQ2, sponsored by Gets Credit Union and Ventura Foods, Nan Carter, almost 95 years old. Her impact on the game of softball still being felt today. We take a look back at her career and how the Mustangs honored her this season next. Welcome back into this week's episode of the St. Joe Mustang Show right here on KQ2, sponsored by Gets Credit Union and Ventura Foods. I'm Mitchell Ribrol. That's my co-anchor, Chris Rausch. Thank you, I think. Yeah. That's really nice of you. No you seem, problem. You seem chipper today. It's because I'm talking about the Mustangs. It's One take Mitch. Yes. 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 So we still have plenty more to get to. We talked about women in sports night earlier in the show, right, where you know, Mustangs honor Kendra Hodgen and the Mallory McAndrews for what they've done for Central and Bishop LeBlon and so much more. There's an individual the Mustangs honored last Saturday on, on Northwest Missouri State Night, Nan Carter. The name in softball world should ring a bell. In fact, she's done so much over the past several decades. The 94-year-old throwing out a first pitch last week, but she's done so much more for the softball world. We would not be where we are with female sports, female opportunities in sports, without someone like Mrs. Carter. How does a small town school teacher in North Missouri become a beloved softball icon? It's a love story of sorts. It's for the love of the game because she truly loves softball. Nan Carter grew up playing softball in the 1940s and 50s, in a time where there weren't too many opportunities in women's sports. So she did something about it. In 1961, Carter created a fast pitch program known as the North Missouri CTs, winning seven state championships with eight runner-up finishes to boot, and the CT Timers, her 35 and older squad, winning two national titles. Women wanted to play for Carter. I'll be honest with you, my grandfather, um, and he used to tell me, he said, you know, that lady's a really good good coach. You'd be good if you could play for her someday. And so I say that he has to be smiling from up there in heaven because of the fact that it did come to fruition that I did get to play for her. She'd take care of her players wherever they traveled and they went all across the country. She provided us uniforms, she provided the uh, motels, she carried insurance on us, she had uh, well, we started out with two station wagons, which wasn't really good, but anyway, we started with two station wagons. But that was all taken care of, and so all we had to do was go worry about playing ball. Carter had an unparalleled passion for the game, even building a softball field at her and her husband's home south of Fillmore, Missouri. You know, being with my dad from Fillmore, just um, anytime we went up there, I knew where the ball field was, and her influence always was, you know, just seemed enormous and, and just uh, a huge impact on you know, coaches and the game of softball, but just in general, coaches and players and the opportunities that she gave kids. And with the example she set, it's encouraged generations of women to pursue their own dreams too. She was so supportive of women and tried to promote women in sports, no matter what, what sport you're talking about. They were just great at promoting young women opportunities. And just and and I think that's important that we probably take some of those things for granted. You know, I did as a player, I do as a coach at times, but I feel like there's that sense of leaving the game better than we got it. It's been more than 60 years since she started her softball program, and in 2007, Carter spoke with KQ2 about the softball teams and all those memories she made with those girls over the years. I hope I made a little difference in a few lives, and and I hope that. 
somewhere I help someone a little bit. Besides family, nothing really matches up for Carter like softball. That is, unless you're talking about her girls. She always talks about the girl, even now when she's having memory issues and stuff, if she's trying to say anything about that, oh, I had such good girls. I met Miss Carter through my family with my grandma playing for so many years, and then my my aunt and my dad. And just, she's always been like an icon in softball, and everybody knows Coach Carter. It's hard for Carter to get around these days, as she will be 95 in July. But when surprised with a chance to get back on the ball field, there was little doubt Carter wouldn't take it. I thought that this would be a perfect way to honor her and her legacy because those girls that were on her team still are so much a part of her life and you don't always get that. The Sages of Mustangs hosted a night for Northwest Missouri State earlier this summer and the 1953 Bearcat graduate and nearly 30 year physical education teacher returned home to a ball diamond. She needs recognition because she won't she won't toot her own horn. She won't say things about herself, but she has done so much for the girls in the area. Hundreds of wins, walls full of trophies and honors. Nan Carter will always be known as a winner in softball, but her true wins can never be measured by what happened on the field. It's by what she's done for so many women over the years because of her love for the game. It was so neat to just step back on Saturday and watch her team be out there with her and just they were cheering her on like she always cheered them on and so that was so neat to see that. When people say it's just a game, it's not just a game. It was opportunities that she built leaders, she built people that were going to impact other women and um, just you know she left her mark without even realizing what she's done. We'll wrap things up here on the St. Joseph Mustang Show, exclusively right here on KQ2, sponsored by Getz Credit Union and Ventura Foods. Mitchell, we had a lot on this show. We heard from Tanner Schmidt, Riker Curry's story that he's known Johnny Coy for probably a decade or so now at this point. Women in Sports Night, Nan Carter's impact in softball, just a lot going on still. We're only three weeks into the season. Yeah, and I can't wait to see what more we have in store because obviously we still have July 4th. That whole weekend is just as big, but so far I like that we're able to showcase a lot of these athletes on this team and, and women in sports and all of the stories so far this summer. And we're just getting pretty much scratching the surface of just yep. the stories of these athletes because there's so many local connections, local ties, and we'll get to those in the coming episodes as well. But that will do it for us. Anything else you want to say? No, I think. You're still we'll riding your vacation. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back next week. All right, Hopefully that will, Chris will too. Well, I should be. That will do it for us on the St. Joe Mustang Show. We'll see you next time.